using technology. Now, I talked about, um, uh, I talked before about how you'll be able to use tests that are not in the, in the clinical books. You can start thinking outside the square. How can we use technology to help our athletes or how to measure your objective assessment? The simple iPhone. The simple iPhone can take photos, it can take videos. So if you are measuring how fast a person runs in 100 meters, you can actually video them right through as they're doing this. You can video them from the front on view. You can video them on the side. You can video them at certain points, 25 meters, 50 meters, 75 meters. One of my uh, good friends um, and one of the top surgeons in, um, in Melbourne, Dr. Alte Altantis, uh, who's a, one of the top knee and hip surgeons in Melbourne, he uses technology, he uses the iPhone as a goniometer. So there's an actual app that you can use to get a measure. <clears throat> Gone are the days of using the, um, using the uh, goniometer. You can use the app on your iPhone to determine range. How wonderful is that? So look at ways of using technology um, in your objective assessment. Uh, the ways that uh, I personally use it, as I said, I use the iPhone. Um, I use um, the iPad uh, video as well. And um, something else I use is the person's or the athlete's iPhone uh, or their own video because they get to go home and have a look at them themselves. So, oh wow, I can't even, you know, at 25 meters I'm running very smoothly, at 75 meters, wow, I've lost my function, I, I'm not doing that as well. So that's how important that could be because you can use technology to help them and also help them understand by having it on their phone. <clears throat> so we've run through subjective, we've run through the objective, and when you've got very good subjective findings, mind you, they're all measured, and uh, you've, you've made it objectified, uh, you've, got a very good obje you've got very good objective results, and mind you, they're all measured, you then have to prioritize your findings. When you have a list of things that are not right, you can prioritize to say, all right, these things are the worst, these things are not too bad, these things are perfect. And by prioritizing, it allows you to create, um, create a list, um, it allows you to see and conceptualize what areas you might need to treat first. It also gives your patient, it also gives your athlete a list of things that they need to work on. Because if you found the top five things could be tight muscles, lack of range, uh, it could be weakness in muscles, it could be that uh, functionally someone can't, doesn't have the right form when they're doing a certain task. And if you fix all of those things up, guess what happens to that person's function? Guess what happens to that person when they're playing that sport? It would improve. So prioritizing that list is conceptually very powerful for you and it's very powerful for your athlete. Once again, you be the scientist. <clears throat> when you're pulling out information and you're giving scores, you can Talk to your patient about it. You can say, well, wow, you know, this gluteal muscle on this right side is super tight. The left one, wow, it's not tight at all. You give it a score and then you share that score with them. What I wouldn't do is say, okay, that right side is super tight. What score would you give it? Okay? And you might say, well, the left side is really good, what score would you give it? You come up with the score first, because you are the scientist, you are the professional here. You have done all this training to work out all those tests, you have done all the hard work 
the person can be used as a, as a bouncing board uh, to share what your findings are and to also help with um, uh, cognizance, uh, meaning that when you're sharing this information, they're actually sharing back and saying, wow, I totally agree with you, Kassar. I didn't realize this was that tight. Um, but you are the scientist. You pull out all the information, you're in control.